ones. And sometimes they can waste themselves. Mm. He says, no, I can't see anything leaking at all. And this is before I had the gluing backgrounds. And I'm like, well, just wipe it up and see if it comes back. So he wipes it up. He says, it's here the next day. I said, well, I'm home in two days. Just keep wiping it up. It's there the next day. It's there the next day. I get home. There's about a quart of water on the flat floor, right, right in front of this tank. Like, what the heck? None of the filters are leaking. They're all working. Do you want me to turn that off? No. So uh, it's going to start. It's going to start. The pump is going to start cycling. It's just the water change. Yeah, well, Sorry. Uh, you'll hear. We'll let, we'll let it run more time. Yeah. And then, so I'm looking at the tanks. I can't find anything wrong. Get on my hands and knees, and I happen to glance up, and that had a black background on the outside, and I see this line, like it's going from here to here on the back. The grass glass is cracked that whole way, and it's leaking out of that little crack. I'm thinking all that's going to take is that, and it's going to. So it's full of fish, and I'm like. Okay, I found the leak. Now, how do I keep 40 gallons of water in the tank? So I, I carefully started siphoning the water into buckets. That's why you always have to have buckets. Yeah. Buckets, right? And I netted all the fish, put them in the buckets, and pulled the tank out. I, I was lucky no water on the ground, but it was just a, a one big crack. What do you reckon cracked it? You know, it was on the back side, not the front side. Yeah. Um, it didn't crack where the hole was drilled. It was away from that. Um, I think it had to be something in assembly right. mm. that that just was waiting for the right. Maybe he bumped it. Or, I don't know. It's weird. Anyway. Sometimes you get lucky like that in this hobby, hey? I know. You do. Like that's happened to me, I think since especially when you drill the tanks mm -hmm. oh because yours are drilled too mm -hmm. yeah so yeah you might get like the tiniest piece of something behind just, that bulkhead yes a little crack and it just takes the pressure build up over time just to compress it and, and i was telling you what happened with the 75 that's broken up there by the garbage can yeah i had the bulkhead in that's drill right. it fine yeah. i had the bulkhead in and with without thinking i usually when i have the bulkhead in then i'll set two by fours up if i want to lay it on its back because i was going to glue the background in I forgot the bulkheads and I laid on its back gently, mm. but as soon as the bulkhead hit the carpet, bam, I thought, oh, damn, why didn't I use the two by fours? So easy. You know, the funny thing with the bulkheads is that sometimes you have a leak yeah. and then over time, gunk. It goes away. Yeah, it'll just disappear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like the fish room aging. Yeah. It ages itself. You know, another thing about the bulkheads? If, if we were to go behind that row of tanks, I guarantee you could find two of the nuts are loose. Yeah. But the bulkhead's still sticking. No, no, it's fused in. And, it's, and so I've, I've retightened all the top ones. They loosen over time because the, the washer get, retains that thinness. So. I swear, like, when I first set my room up, yeah, there was so many problems, like, you turn on things, leaks, all that sort of stuff. And I feel like I never made that much of an effort to try and fix it. Yeah. But like, it goes yeah. away. Calcium must build up. Yeah, and calcium or, or just little bits of dirt. Yeah, it just works itself out. Yeah. <coughs> but um, yeah. So yeah, what are we talking about? I can't talk anymore. Oh my gosh, yeah, I know. We've talked a lot the last few days. <coughs> I suppose, I don't know. Okay. I just thought we should um, get together and take the opportunity to like sit down and have a chat, share it with people. I wanted to cool. do it in the car, but we were buggered. <laughs> well, he was snoring in the back. <laughs> yeah, and it was just too much. Yeah. Um, you know, we would have had all the road noise. I'd prefer to have the ambience of a fish room for our right. fish conversation. So, cool. yeah, for like viewers and listeners, I don't really expect people to view this that much. They might. They might listen Put to it. Put it on the TV or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But um, we made the trip here a few days ago mm -hmm. to visit Dean. I brought Harlan with me. Harlan's been helping film and film for his channel too. And we're doing a big trip around the US over the next three weeks. Right. And Dean was our first stop. Um, you've been like a major part of my development as a fish breeder. This sounds cringy, but it's true. 
And um, yeah, I, I thought that I'd, I'd want to come to you first. I've watched every single video you did with Corey, I swear. And I've watched a lot of them multiple, multiple times. So Dean's been like amazing. You've, you've exceeded any expectation I had. Really? We've had Good. such a great time with you, man. Good. Like Dean picked us up from the airport, waited a couple of hours at night, dropped us home, made sure we got into our Airbnb safe. Like, you know, you've driven us around everywhere, organized an itinerary. I didn't even expect that. That and was cool. Yeah, we've been to like some amazing places already. We went to Aquarium Zen. Right. That was cool. Um, we went to the, the wet spot today. Wet spot. Yeah, that was awesome. Tomorrow's, and tomorrow's the co-op. Today, yeah, tomorrow's the big day. Yeah. And um, yeah, I've, we've just had like such a crazy time. And Good. I couldn't, you know, we've just hearing stories and all that. It's like really a dream come true. So thank you so much for having us. And you bet. You bet. Yeah, it's already like we've, for those who don't know as well, Dean woke up at five to feed the fish and fed the fish, came, picked us up at seven, drove four hours to Oregon and then stayed with us all day while we filmed and then drove another four hours back, took us to dinner, filmed two videos with me and now we're filming this podcast. So we're all still tired. Yeah. It's been a big day. But yeah, I don't know. We'll just talk but, about things. But we kind of knew that this was going to be the long day, I think. Yeah, we knew this was going to be the big day. The big day. We yeah. kind of warmed into it a bit. Yeah, a little yeah. bit, yeah. Like the first day we started, we filmed your room. Right. And we just kind of like... Right. Worked that out. And then the second day, what did we do? We went you know, to... that was two days Aquarium's. ago. I can't remember. Yeah, we went to... Oh, we went to the Amazon Spheres. Amazon oh, yeah. Spheres, yeah. yeah. That would be a really cool video, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, and, I think that'll um, be a good one. And then we did the Aquarium Zen shop, which was amazing. Yeah. Stephen was a really cool guy. Um, and then today, yeah, World of Wet Pets, so... Right. Right. But um, I was going to ask you, so... I think everyone knows you from the Aquarium Co-op channel. Yep, pretty much. Uh, that pretty much, yeah. Yep. Um, everyone that came up to you today knows you from that. Right. I want to start with how that started, because I know you've been breeding fish since you were a little kid. And right. Corey's had the shop for 13 years, but he's had fish for a long time. Yes. You no, know, he's had the shop for 10 years. 10 years. He, he might have been in it for like yeah. a lot longer than that. Yeah. So how did that start? So, so... I mean, Corey's background what is uh, he, he was delivering medical equipment and then he was working at a shop up north um, of where his shop is now. It's uh, way north from here. It would be an extra hour drive from where we're going tomorrow. Um, and, um, but he was coming to the Greater Seattle Aquarium Society club meetings. And that's where I first met him. Um, at the club meetings and at that point in time Corey was a monster fish keeper We weren't in tune with anything that we were doing together because he was a monster fish keeper and I was discus rams angels and actually crystal red shrimp at the time and uh, And then he had kind of announced that he was gonna open a shop. I'm thinking you're nuts. You're crazy You know, I mean, you know, he's this young guy gonna open a shop um, now he had he had managed a shop um, that he had worked at, so so he had he had that experience, but not being an owner. Um, and and then the shop that he was owning was going to be in this out of the way place um, in a town forty five minutes from me. I said like, why can't it be in Bellevue? You know, it's like yeah. um, <laughs> so so he opened it. And um, I, I don't officially know how the name Aquarium Co-op happened. We can ask him that tomorrow, but I, I believe it was designed, he was gonna be a cooperative so people could, breeders could bring their fish to him and he would sell them to the public. <coughs> so um, I didn't go to the shop at first. It was too far to drive, uh, but slowly around me, all of the mom and pop shops closed down. So I didn't have it. There's none in Bellevue right now. Um, I just had Petco and PetSmart, which, you know, I somewhat despise, but you know, it's business. Business is business. You can't argue with it. So, um, so one day I decide I'm gonna drive up there and the shop was nice. Corey was nice. Um, Corey was the only one working at the shop at the time, no employees. Um, 
and uh, you know we were chatting and chatting and I bought a few things brought them home this is way before there was any easy green or any other co-op products of this is like before YouTube right yes he just started yeah it maybe. or he might have just started YouTube yeah yeah so so then I had bred these pure white short tail, short fin bettas. And um, I probably had like 500 fry. Um, and they were all approaching about an inch and a quarter, literally. And I'm like, I could not get anyone locally that wanted to buy more than five or 10. So I went up to the co-op again. I said, hey, Corey, I said, I have all these bettas. Um, they're all the same, pure white. Some of them have just a little bit of pink in them. Um, how about you buy them all for a dollar each and you can sell them for whatever you want, I don't care. I said you could sell them for three bucks, you could sell them three for a dollar, it doesn't matter to me. And he said, well, how many you got? I said, I don't know, but if you take them all, I'll make that deal. So I netted them all, counted them. Um, I can't remember the exact count but it was over 300 Nuts. at that time. That's like a standard better spawn. <coughs> yeah. Like if you got it in either. Yeah. And, and he Too took, them, to deal with. took yeah. them all and literally had them in the shop for over a year. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've still got and, fish like that too. And, yeah, and I'm you? not sure that that was our best deal ever. I'm not sure about that. But, you know, it kind of started that that rapport between the two of us. Um, uh, several months later, he called me um, or messaged me one way or other. He got in touch with me and said he had um, 10 angelfish he wanted me to come get and breed. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? You want me to come buy them and breed them? And he said, well, just come up and see them. And, and they were these, what, We've used the term super red koi angels or red koi angels. Um, he had got them from a local wholesaler um, and he wasn't sure that the wholesaler was getting them again, but he was able to sell them for like $30 each retail with, without even trying. And he just thought that, hey, Dean can breed these. So. so I went up there, I looked at him, I said, you know, I haven't done angels for years, um, but it could, you know, fund finishing off the fish room here. And I said, okay, so what, what do you, how do you want to do this? He said, well, you just take them. I said, well, but you need some money for them. He says, you take them and I get the first spawn for free. I thought, okay, that's, that's, that's fair. They die though. They die. He gets the first spawn that all the dead ones <laughs> i mean i i we i i literally went Bag through I, I went through that scenario with him i said what if there's only 10 fry in the first spawn he said well that's what i get yeah that's pretty uh, ballsy of him yeah and of course there was way more than 10 i mean there was several hundred yeah um that he got for free and then after the first spawn i could we we agreed on a price and i started selling them to him uh monthly and, and then he started picking up my other fry. Like I was doing a lot of blue rams and gold rams at the time. I was doing some non-wild discus that he was taking some of. Um, so it kind of started as like a selling yeah. relationship. Yeah. Like he was selling him fish, he was yeah. selling Yeah, and, and there was times where I needed stuff so I would take credit. Yeah. And there was times I didn't, so he would, he would write me a check. I actually have a question here. How was... <coughs> At that stage, how was the shop doing? Like, was he, do you reckon he was like going well with it? Or do you reckon it was like an uphill battle? He was still battling uphill, definitely. Definitely. Because there was times he would say, I would rather give you credit than pay. Yeah. Um, and there's times when I said, okay, I'll take credit again. Um, and there's other times where I said, well, pay me later and stuff like that. So we just, we just worked through it all. <coughs> um, and we were willing, we were both willing to work through it all. Yeah. You know, um, uh, he was when when I when I brought him fish, they were good quality, 
didn't have any problems with them. Um, I, and and he started with the quarantine room from the very start. Do you think he had like at the start just like an instant kind of friendship connection? Like from we had an instant connection. Uh, the friendship probably came l later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, we were connected because I was a breeder. He was a shop owner. Yeah. And the thing that I liked about Corey dealing with Corey's shop versus other shops is. Um, a lot of other shops would say, okay, I'll take 20 angels and 10 rams. And Corey would say, okay, bring me 100 angels and 50 rams. So the numbers were far different in Corey's shop because he was moving far more fish than other shops. Mm. So it made it, it made it so I would call him first with fry. Yeah. And, and, and. Just because he had the turnover. Yeah. yeah. He had the turnover. And. You know, I mean, we've talked earlier today about netting fish. You know, that takes time. Yeah. So whether I'm bagging 20 or 50, the count time is not so much time. It's all the tying of the bags and all of that, you know. So it became where I would always call him first, you know, um, or message him first. Um, this is what I've got. What do you want? You know, and, uh, and we tried other fish. There was some other fish... Um, that he had brought in that he said, let's, let's do the same thing with these and we spawn them. I was also at that time doing a lot of epistos and he would sell everything I brought. Every, he said any epistos, just bring them. Um, and sometimes it was pears and sometimes it wasn't. It just didn't matter, they would, sell, they would all sell. So it just kind of blossomed and blossomed and, and then at the same time, his YouTube was growing and he was getting better at it and um, he asked if he could come to a fish, fish room tour. Do you know how many subs he had when that happened? <coughs> Couldn't tell you. I feel like I subscribed to Corey. I think I knew about him at like maybe 12,000. Yeah. So that actually was, that felt late. A lot. Because I was, that was like a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. and like I found him quite late because I was like all over YouTube back then. Right. But I think I didn't subscribe till 40. I don't I, know, I didn't. I, I, I bet you subscribed before me then. Probably, yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> because I've watched Corey for years. I yeah. mean, I, I would watch him, but I'd like, why do I want to subscribe, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And uh, so, yeah, so you, you probably were a subscriber before I was. No, I'm not trying to flip, yeah. But but anyway, uh, yeah, you know, it just, it just kind of kept going and going, and he came for a fish room tour. Um, that led to other videos and other videos, and then it just kind of... When he, when he brought when he when he did bring Jimmy on as a full time editor, then it let Corey and I kind of really hang out. Yeah, really hang out and get filmed in more of a natural environment. Yeah, that know? was what people loved, I think. And yeah, and, yeah, and it and it and it turned out really well. Like uh, me and Harlan, when we talked, like we, I don't know, like with our YouTube videos, I try and create that like home feeling. I want people to feel yeah. like they're like the fly on yeah. the wall. Like they are now. Right. Yeah. Like right. I just like not overproduced and um, some of the best tours and videos we have are like, yeah, when it's just like hanging out. Yep. And Harlan yep. lets me do that so much, yep. like when he films and, and... And, you know, I mean, Corey and I have talked about it several times, you know, we should just film our conversations. Yeah. Like sometimes when we sit, we actually sit down to lunch after we're working on his fish room and we just, we end up talking for hours. It's like you've broken that like early, like... You, you know, it's like you've just seen each other, haven't saw, seen yeah, each yeah. other, right? You break the early contact. Right. Yeah. And then, like, you've, like, done a bit of jobs and you're tired, like we are now. Yep. And it just, like, comes out. Right. And that's right. when all the good ideas, like... Oh, you should, hear, you should hear some of the weird ideas we've had, but... Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> uh, I think as a viewer as well, it's, like, easy to watch. It's so much easier to watch when, like, someone's real. Natural. I just love it. Yeah. It's more natural. It's not, yeah. like, the fake, like, here's me holding my camera, like... Right. Hey, guys. Right. Like, yeah, I hate I'm that. I'm the... Never mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. but um so yeah so what was it like the first time he filmed with you the first time you ever filmed like because i bet you couldn't even imagine that ever happening in this fish room um i think um the first time we filmed Corey was amazed at how many fish were in here and how small of a space yeah and i think that came out in the video definitely he's i, I remember him saying I have to walk sideways through the door because I, I had something else over there where the opening was even smaller. I can't remember what it was. 
um, and, um, and and you know, I mean, he was joking in a way, but he was just showing people how small a space it is, and then how many fish were coming out of there. And I was like, yeah, there there is a lot of fish. I think even at that time, the fry system, as it is today, was different. Yeah, it would have been for sure. Um, yeah. Because, um, and, and you know, I can't, I can't honestly say that that's in its final evolution because I'm always thinking of other ideas, new ideas. Yeah, you just, like, um, honestly, your DIY skills are just impeccable. <laughs> yeah. The past few days I've seen, like, some of the stuff you just, like, throw out that no one sees. Right. It's, like, insane, like, your, like, attention to detail and stuff. I just don't, I don't have that in me. Yeah. It's genius. Yeah. It's really yeah. Good. yeah. But... So what, you reckon this is going to keep improving, obviously? Yeah, I mean, there, there's some improvements that I want to do to it. There's, I, I mean, um, we've talked about um, Lowe's Fish Lab trays. Yeah, yeah. So I had them, I had several of them in there last week. Um, and I've been playing with them. I've been playing with my own trays. Um, yeah, it's always going to improve. Yeah. Um, and uh, I don't know. I don't know what the next rendition is, but um, it's see. it's going to be better, you know. So, so you filmed with him, <laughs> and then it kind of became like a kind of became a, a uh, thing, at least a monthly or yeah. And then it's there's times when it's slowed down because of both of our schedules, um, and then there's other times when we just pump out videos. So yeah, one of my some of my favorite <coughs> of the the videos with Corey were like in here but there was that one video I'm sure there's, there might be some other viewers who watched this one but the when you went into the mountains in Peru Ooh. Yeah. that was a great video that you was have, fun yeah, yeah like what was what was that whole experience like because we've done Outback and we've done right. um, I've done North Queensland but like barely gotten into it yeah. but I can't even imagine Peru so the mountain trip um my my actual i have two favorite clips of videos from that trip yeah um one is dang i can't remember the song right now but the song when the song came on in the van and everybody firework was, yeah yeah and they were all like yeah singing to it yeah i remember um, that. i think it was firework I, it was yeah um and it was katie katie yeah katie, yeah, katie, katie Fire, yeah. Fire, yeah, yeah. yeah that was it so that was one of my favorite clips um, from that. Uh, but you know, um, uh, another one of my favorite clips is when Corey is sitting in the middle of the, this river that we we had just caught a ton of these little tiny, little teeny tiny blue tetras, and I was catching um, uh, a stick fish of some sort. I can't remember the name of it. Um, a lancelotta of some sort, mm. okay? Super, super high dorsal and super long streamers. They only get about four inches long. And, um, and I remember saying to Corey, I said, now, this is when you can show people on your channel that fish get water changes because he's sitting in the middle of a stream and thousands and thousands of gallons are flowing by him. Um, and, and then he had picked up the substrate and he says, see, this is kind of a very coarse substrate and there's all these quarries swimming on it yeah. and, and they're not cutting themselves up. So um, those are two of my favorite clips from that trip. But on that trip, um, it was just Corey and I, no other co-op people and two other um, Aquarius, one from the Virgin Islands and one from uh, the Midwest somewhere or Tennessee. I can't remember exactly where he's from. And uh, Corey and I just really bonded because there was times when we were catching fish and um, you had to work in teams of two. And uh, we would always basically team up and uh, catch fish. And then uh, at the end of every day, you had to put them in your holding tanks back at the, um, at the at, I call it the lodge. They called it the aquaria. So... It's like, I actually find that crazy because when I so agree with that, it like makes you bond. Mm -hmm. All of those trips, like every time we've gone out, even this trip that we've gone on already, 
I love it. It's like at the end of the trip, there's always these little jokes and yes. little things that only you guys know. Only yeah. you know. Right. I, you would never be able to tell me any of those jokes that you and Corey have, but you'll be like to each other, remember that time when right. whatever happened, you slipped right. over. Exactly. And like, but we have that like <coughs> with Jason in Australia. It's like, yep. it's just the funniest just, thing. You I know, like, remember anyone. And, and, and some of them understand. are just stupid things. Oh, but the <laughs> last night, we were in the outback, and the last night, we couldn't stop laughing. We were all on the floor crying, laughing with our stomachs yeah. hurting. It's like, it's just the best thing. It's, what it's like literally what fish keeping is about. Right. So wholesome. Right. Like maniacs in the bush trying to look for fish. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and actually that same trip is, um, uh, what did we, is, oh darn, I lost my train of thought. The mountain trip. The mountain trip, uh, that, that same trip, we were deciding which fish to bring back every time. Um, the gold nugget plecos. The gold nugget plecos. Yeah. Now, I, I will be honest, that shipment of fish is the worst shipment that we've ever had from Peru. And that was your first time trying it, right? No, the second time. Okay. Oh, first, you've done it before that, yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, it's, it's too bad because we did catch some awesome fish that did not make it. Um, no fault of ours. And in reality, it was no fault of the organizers of the trip. It was the exporter in Lima uh, that just dropped the ball completely. So we had a disaster with that, that shipment, but um, we just had a blast collecting. Um, I think Corey did such a good job on that video too. Yeah. yeah. Like um, the part that I like, and I think that I wish I did more of, it's like, it's kind of like having the confidence in the viewer to keep watching, even when it doesn't totally pertain right. to fish. Right. Like he had uh, the video of the toilet and like was just running into a creek. Yeah. Like that stuff's interesting just to see yeah. like what the actual environment for you guys is like. And, and at that point in time, they were trying to show us um, freshwater sponges. Yes. And it was growing in there. I remember. And that. I'm like, I'm not reaching in and touching that. That's oh. coming from where the toilet is flush. Yeah. You know? And it, I mean, it's just this little teeny tiny foot wide creek where they had diverted the water so it's constantly flushing the outhouse and there's sponges growing downstream from that and I'm like, no, I'm not putting my hand in there. That's yeah, crazy. Know, um, even though chances are all of the crap has already been flushed down. So, um, but yeah, so we, yeah, we saw a lot of stuff there. Um, uh, well, I, I wanted to ask too, like we've done only trips in Australia. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to go to like Thailand I've got a mate who does guppies who I could maybe get to go with Yep. if I worked on that. Um, is Peru like a safe place to go? Like, do you feel safe there? Is there anything to worry about? Like, yeah, yeah. I, th I think, um, I mean, the only time I felt like something weird might have been going on was when my wife and daughter were being followed through the market. Um, and I kept trying to step between her and these two guys. They were both carrying purses, and we had a guide with us as was in front. Um, and I finally managed to step between the two. But other than that, um, you know, uh, our, our guides, when we went to what they call the Belem market, which is kind of like the, um, it's not like a Saturday market. It's, it's a market beyond, kind of like the gray market. Yeah. Um, they went with us there to make sure we were safe. Um, and even even there, felt perfectly safe. Walking down the street at night, safe. Um, going out to dinner, safe. And of course, on the boat, never had a problem. Um, saw some, I will say, saw some very cool storms hit the boat on the river, and it, it, was, it was awesome in my, in my eyes. How did you, do, like, what's, what's so awesome about them? Um, so first of all, it rains every day, right? Like pretty much? Huh? No, it didn't. It didn't it rain did. every day. Um, and not even every night. But storms would come through. But I think it does sometimes a year. Maybe in like the wet season or yes. something like that. Yeah, sometimes a year it rains every day. Uh, when we were there, it's basically our late summer. Um, but, um, but when the storms come, um, I, I specifically remember this one where it's like two in the morning and I don't sleep very heavy anyway. So I sleep pretty flat. And all of a sudden I felt like the temperature went from 
85 degrees out to 60. I love that. And, and I'm like, yeah. where did that come from? And then you start hearing the thunder. And as soon as you start hearing the thunder, I hear the crew, they're all up, running around the boat, basically battening the hatches, oh. covering all the open, because the windows are just screens with louvers in front, and they were making sure all of those are shut, in some cases putting wood in front of them. <coughs> and I remember, it. then you start seeing the flashes, the lightning. Um, and it lights up everything. And, and so we're in the cabin. My wife is like, what's going on? I said, it's a storm. And I'm getting my camera ready. <laughs> but, but I'm trying to shut her shutters. I get her shut because the water is starting to come through the window sideways. Yeah. The rain is. And um, so I get her shut. I can't get mine latched. I keep pushing and get, trying to get it latched. Pushing and get the I finally get it latched and I get my camera. I said, I'm going out there. So, you know, you'd go out in your, your I mean, your underwear, right? <laughs> um, and my daughter was in a different cabin because they only have singles and doubles. And she, was, she stays in there if you're out in your underwear. She, sl she slept through the whole storm. They, they, had, they had latched her windows from the outside. She never woke up. Deep sleeper. Yeah. And, um, and, and I go up, I'm starting to film it. I'm like, I hope I get lightning flashes. So you have to hold your camera really still. And I, I got several, I got some videos of it. And um, uh, this one side of the boat, you know, they're all up and they're all soggy because their side got really hit hard. One of them had five inches of rain in their cabin oh. or five inches of water. I'm not sure if it was all from the rain. Had to be from the rain. Yeah. And her mattress was soaked. Uh, but, you know, it, everything drove, dried out by the next night. Everything. everything. So, so the storms were incredible. But, you know, safety-wise, we ate the food, did not drink the water. We had bottled water or, or, or pop or beer. Yeah, I do that in Greece when yeah. I go to Greece. Yeah. Yeah. So we didn't drink the water. Um, we did get all of our shots before you go. Yeah. Um, and uh, I would recommend that from everybody. And you're well, taking, you have to do it, I think. You have to do it to go to Africa. You're supposed to do it. Yeah, um, yeah. They, they, they don't really check that hard at Peru sometimes. Yeah. Um, but it's still very, very recommended. And you're taking malaria pills while you're there. Oh, you, I, you yeah. take malaria pills Every, while you're there. Yeah, you, you, start, you start two days before you get there, and you end two days after. I didn't even think about the mosquitoes there. It must be relentless. Yeah. yeah. No, I didn't think the bugs were that bad at all. Oh. Um, could be just like a malaria prominent area. When yeah. we have heaps of mosquitoes, um, I don't know. I mean, not in the outback. Maybe it was. So the we bug, definitely did have the, mosquitoes out there. Yeah, I mean, we had mosquitoes, but what I learned by the second trip I went is go in your cabin between about five o'clock and dusk, and don't come out until after it's dark, and you won't have any bites. Because that's when they're out. And then you don't get the sunset. I know. Yeah. And, I, and I didn't do that. But if you want to avoid yeah. them, that's what you do. But yeah. the sunset's good there? Oh, they're awesome. They're yeah, awesome. You can imagine, like, over the jungle. They are just... To and the thing is, at night, it's, it's really dark. You don't have any ambient city light. Yeah, so it's true. just the stars and the moon. And it's we had awesome. that out back as well. Yeah, me and Unreal. Yeah, me and it's Harlan so cool, saw, right? Yeah. yeah. I think we told you. Oh, you could see the shooting stars and we, anything. Yeah, we were yeah. sitting at Lake Broadwater and it was like mm -hmm. our last night. It yeah. was just the same night with the laughing and all of that. And I think Jason went and had a shower or whatever and we were just sitting out watching the stars. It sounds romantic, but it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't it, like that. Well, you know, it does, but you know, I, I it will was say amazing. that's some of mine and Corey's favorite time is you know well, we saw everybody else gone to bed wow it's cool out here god lit off a firework for us it was like yeah this huge thing just this huge meteorite just goes nice like a few seconds like yeah. massive and just goes and we both just were like oh <laughs> yeah. like, but well, usually they're like, like a streak this was yeah. like fire and like, it's and fire like, yeah energy. so it's burning up yeah, yeah it was crazy yeah but I was going to say with the storms, like... <laughs> and the next day, that's when the space shuttle crashed, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, the other yeah. thing that happened every time on that trip, too, is Harlem likes gold. Uh -huh. so every time we were, like, at, like, a spot dry. How did I out. know that? How did I know that? Yeah, well, I'm, I had no clue. And Harlan's like, I'm trying to film, like, a, 
I don't know, like a, a cockroach or something on the floor for the documentary. <laughs> it's true. And Harlan's like walking in the dry creek and he's like, I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm like looking for rocks. He's like, pick it up each rock. <laughs> you, you don't have a gold pan? I used to have a metal that. detector. I spent so much money uh, on a metal detector. So you're detector. looking for the nuggets, not the yeah. dust. Oh, okay, yeah. I got you. And cool rocks as well. What but, happened that time when you went out to, um, this is totally off topic, but yeah. whatever, the, um, tell Dean about, uh, is it near Warwick? Yeah. So yeah, he was like 17 and went out by himself for three days, gold, looking, looking for gold nice. in the forest. It was nice. one of the weirdest experiences because I've never really been like alone that far out. Okay. Went out in my car, chucked the metal detector in, sleeping in the back of my car. I'm not sure how far it is. It's about four hours out. Nice. It's, yeah, like sticks. It's sketchy, wild dogs and stuff. <coughs> I went wild out every too. day detecting. I spent like eight grand on a metal detector. Like, but like this place, like if you walked That's out and didn't remember metal. where you went. Yeah. Yeah, you can't know. Like you, you can't get lost. E oh, everything okay. looks the same. The forest looks the same. It's really freaky. So I would only go in twenty minutes walk, and I'd be like, I, "Yeah, I don't even know the way back." It's just I just turn around and walk back to the car nice. before it got dark. But it, the fascination of like not knowing whether the next meat is gonna have a nugget yeah. or yeah. it's just yeah, I just love it. I don't know. Did you find any? I didn't because no. I wasn't like. I guess confident enough to go far enough out far where enough people haven't been. I think that place it was like an old gold area, right? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah so like you. people are just like pilfered it. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. Like, abs like holes everywhere. But back on topic, I was going to say about the storms. So you imagine like when you were saying it goes from like eighty to sixty. Yeah, it was insane. Imagine the fish though, underneath. Well, True. okay, okay, but here's the thing. You're you're <laughs> you're right. The water doesn't change, but the barometric pressure. The barometric pressure changes, but the water temperature changes too. It does. If you think about, um, if you think about in in this one woman's cabin, there's five inches of water. Yeah. Mm. It, over the course of about an hour, I mean, the storm blows through, right? Yeah. Um, five inches of cold water in that river, it's cooler. Yeah. Guaranteed it. So so yeah, the fish um, live in a constant fluctuation. I guess too, like if that water is moving in such a rapid pace. Yes that fresh water coming in is cooling absolutely just even that's from the what atmosphere. i'm saying right yeah so yeah it would it so would. it's both it's barometric pressure and causing spawning probably yeah, that's that's the, yeah i mean like yeah because yeah. i think wouldn't a lot of stuff spawn I, i've always wondered why why during the rain my like, opinion yeah is um there's a influx of a lot of food yeah because nuts, fruits, bugs have died in the forest floor. Now that's all getting washed in. The fish are just scarfing it down, getting fat. Um, and, they're in there, and then the leaves and everything are, that have been decomposing are, are adding tannins and, and everything to the, to the river. Um, so I it, it just creates the perfect environment for wanting to spawn. I thought maybe like it made sense for Tetris because like they'd spawn and the eggs would carry down. Yeah. So like it'd be further away, but I guess that doesn't really happen. I much. don't think that's what. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's so. Um, but, but, I think it's just it creates the perfect environment, and then you, on top of that, you're adding the low pressure. Yeah. Um, so you know, you're you're, everything that we're kind of doing as fish breeders in our fish rooms, is happening big time in nature. Yeah. Like like probably, ten times, fold what we're doing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I just totally believe that. And then in here, this room, <coughs> one sec. This room, I actually thought it was a little bit bigger than what I thought it was gonna be. Really? Yeah, I don't know why. I think maybe because Corey said like how small it was. It is tiny. Yeah. I am still fascinated how many things you are doing in here. Yeah. How many things do you reckon you got going on right now? How many, we would, how many what? Things do you reckon you've got going on? Projects. Like pro breeding projects. I have no idea. Let's count. Have you counted how many tanks are in here? We no. counted them yesterday. It was like 40 something. I don't remember. 40 it's something. In, it's in the yeah. tour. I can't so, remember. That would like, be a lot of projects. Yeah, I don't have that many like, fingers. Like actively, I guess, like Praycox. Praycox, Akaras, um, the L128s. Yep. Yeah, um, Ooh. 
The um, Sturbase. Four. The Wobbin Master, uh, yep. Ancestors Wobbin Master. The L397s aren't in the room, but the Fry are. Um, the Cockatoides, I'm, uh, even though I inherited those, I'm trying to... <coughs> breed them? Bre well, I have bred them. There's babies over there. Sure. Um, but I think I only have one... May I probably have more than one male. I've got... This one's kind of stagnant, so let's not count that. That's Fry. Um, leopard Frogs. Yeah. L two O ones, yeah. Blue Rams, yeah. Uh, that'll be the last of the Festivums. That's kind of sad. I really like them. Um, because I I traded away the adults. You wouldn't grow up just more of them just to keep them for. Um, like chuck them in a discus tank. No, I don't uh, think so. Forget it then. And let's see the angels, of course. Yeah. And then. Oh, did you encounter the blue eyes? Not yet. <laughs> I mean, I've got three different blue, di blue eyes, right? Yeah, I guess probably about 18, 20, you'd say. Yeah. Because we were talking in the car too about the optimum. Yeah, because there's catfish in, in, the, yeah. in the laundry and in, yeah. So. And the rice fish in the summer. Yeah. Because we were talking about, I wanted to know what your opinion was. Opinion was, I feel like in my fish room at the moment, I have a hard time letting go of projects. Like I'll do something and I'll keep it in case maybe I want to do it again. Yep. Or I'll just keep it because I hoard fish. I don't hoard normally. I just like, like hoarding fish. But right. What do you think like the optimum number is where you can actually like do projects and actually do them well? Like, I would, like you know, I was saying I bred the Panduro the Pistos, but I ended up with the, like six stunted fries. Like right. I didn't really breed them. So, I'm retired now, so I have more time. Yeah. So that makes it easier. But let's just say you're working full time, just because that's what most people are doing. Yeah. Um, I would say don't try more than three. Yeah. Um, and 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 one of the things that I would recommend is try to do two fish in one tank. Like we were talking earlier about maybe plecos and rainbows. Yeah, stacking. That works. Yeah. Um, I used to have a, a 75 with plecos, rainbows, precots rainbows, yeah. and sturbase all going. And I, did I, I told you that before, but yeah. So I had plecos, L397s, I had sturbase corridors, and I had precox blue rainbows. Or turquoise rainbows all spawning in the same tank regularly until one day the stir base found the rainbow mop and then after that i had plecos and stir base but then the rainbows found the stir bay eggs yeah so i ended up now i can do the plecos and rainbows together and i took the stir base out i think it's good having those two together because the rainbows drop eggs for the plecos. Not all eggs hit the mop. No, yeah, you're right. Not all hit the mop. And also, they're swimming above them, yeah. so the plecos are at more at ease. Yeah, it's a super symbiotic relationship. Yeah. It's even, funny because they come from completely opposite sides. I was going to say, even though they don't come from the same like biotech. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Even though they don't come from the same biotech, they do that. Do you reckon, um, do you reckon you'll make your way to Australia at some point? I hope so. Yeah, we'd take you around. Yeah. Are there yeah. any, like, have you thought, actually given it much thought? Yeah, I've, I've actually, this will surprise you because I haven't told you this yet, but um, when I was in grade six, I had to do a report on a different country that I would visit. <laughs> and I did Australia. Do you remember much from the report? <laughs> no, but I, I mean, I was in the fish back then, but not like I am now, but um, but I just remember I wanted to go there because of the outback, mm. um, because of what did I read about Aborigines? Yeah. Um, and the reef. The reef school, yeah. Yeah, and um, and I w I was actually in what we call Boy Scouts here, so I'd been out hiking and camping by that age. So it was just, you know, when I had to write a report, 
that's the first country that came to mind. If you came like fish wise, what would you want to do? Like, if we had to take you around, is there anything like that that you've seen that? There's one, one fish that I want to get a hold of. Yeah. And it's the honey honey blue eyes. Yeah. Um, Do many people have them here? I've, I've been told that there's several people that have them. I've never seen them for sale. Do you know what they'd sell for? Uh, um, last time I saw some for sale, it was $400 each. That's crazy. What? <laughs> that's like That's like... Payback, because all oh, the fish, yeah. all the plecos in Australia are like yeah. three I'm just grand. jealous. I want to move here for plecos. Yeah. No, I don't want to move here for honey. Four hundred dollars a pot. Yeah, and, but I don't know if they sold for that. Okay. If that's what the asking yeah, price yeah. was. Because you know what's funny is I've got those in my backyard. I know. In a bucket, and I, I, know. Even, I don't even bother feeding them. Yeah, and they just breed. Jesus, that's crazy. That's why I'm sending those vials home with you. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> that's not happening. Yeah, but um. Like, or you could stuff them in the empty saving cream bottle. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> You're gonna get me in trouble. People will think I'm doing that. No, I'll just give them to someone else, they'll send them to me. Yeah. But, um. So, anyway, yeah, so I, I do want those. I just think they're, they're awesome fish. By the way, um, DPI, like, uh, and, and. Leave me alone, F and, off. I'm not <laughs> actually doing this. <laughs> Dean's tried uh, multiple times and I've said no. And, um, I mean, I've seen videos where you go into the, even these little small rivers and little waterfalls, and I think that would be just fun getting in there and, um, even yeah. if you can't bring it back, seeing it. Yeah. You know? Um, oh, we'd give you, like, I mean, we, we, we'd take you around. Like, see, 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 cool seeing seeing what the nature's, because, you know, I mean, I've, I've seen a lot of nature around the United States. Yeah. Um, over all of my 66 years. Um, but I seen a little bit in Europe, but none outside of that other than Peru. So, I mean, I would like to see more of South America too. I'd like to see Asia for sure. And Australia. Um, so yeah, I'd like to see them all. If you, um, like if you had honey blue eyes here, how do you reckon you'd go about breeding them? Because like I actually had trouble with them in aquariums. Like I, yeah. I, Jason gave me like fifteen, and it was I, like I really appreciated that because at that time they were going for like thirty bucks each because you can't collect them from the wild. I, I understand that. Like yeah. so we they were endangered and you couldn't collect them, but you could keep them, and you couldn't sell them was the rule. But then they changed the rule and instantly. They became marketable. Right. People wanted them. So they were like 45 bucks each or whatever. Um, so I appreciated him giving me them to try and breed. But I like lost most of them. And I was down to two and then I just threw them outdoors and they just went nuts. It's interesting. Isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Is it? Jason, my phone number. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but so so um, how would I go about it? Um, depending on how many I started with. Because if you had like $400 bloody blue eyes like that would be I, like I couldn't high afford stakes. that I'm on a fixed income now yeah, so, well, yeah. yeah but but, but it, you know if, if I got a group of them I would probably divide that group into two so I had redundancy yeah and maybe some would go in a, I mean I can't I couldn't do them outside Not all right year now. round I could yeah. do them maybe in the summertime <coughs> but I might do some in a tank I would I would two different temperature ranges and um, and just give them, give them the best go I could, you know. Live food, live food, a lot of brine shrimp, probably. I think the split tactics probably the way when you get something like that. Yeah, you have to. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's the first thing I did when I brought the discus back from Peru is I split them up because you know if I if I lose half, then I still have the other half. Have you ever seen much like rogue stuff come out of wild fish? Like, I've seen. In Australia, the like horsehair worms, Ooh. like these disgust. Have you seen them? Yeah. Like the disgusting long parasite. They get into like grasshoppers and stuff. Yeah. And like the grasshoppers, I think it paralyzes them. They jump into water. Yep. And it's, it's dirty worms creep comes out of them. Has that ever happened like with any of your stuff? Um, not yet. No. No. Um, I've always anything I brought back from Peru, I go through the what we call the trimeds. Yeah. Um, 
and then I actually go through uh, deworming. Yeah. And then I do the trimeds again, and then I deworm again. It takes about uh, six weeks total. Wow. And after that six weeks, I usually haven't had any issues with anything. If they're stocking and skinny, you just do it again. Yeah. That's expensive. Um, but I haven't had that. But, but you know, some fish, uh, I, I, I will say like discus, you might have to deworm them twice a year no matter what. Um, and, and you can tell when they start becoming lethargic. Rams the same way. Yeah. Uh, and rams also get flukes, the yeah. gill flukes. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes you have to do stuff like that as a precaution. I'll, I must say, like, in, like, from the videos with Corey, it looks like you don't do any mistakes. It looks like all of your fish never get sick. I remember thinking, like, when I was trying to set up my room that, like, nothing ever went wrong here. Right. And then, like, coming here, like, there is no sick fish, but, like, it's interesting to see how your rams over time, like, You've got a few, like you've got really nice ones, but then right. like a few of them starting to get the gill fluke. The gill plates. Yeah, the gill plate issue. Yeah. And I've had that happen before and I found it so frustrating. That's from too much inbreeding, I think. I yeah, think. I think that too. And, and a lot of times it doesn't show up till later. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's like an older fish get it. Right. And they right. just like quickly decline. Yep. After that they will, yeah. So, um, like I was just saying that like not to be like, you're doing yeah. stuff, like because it just happens. So, it made me feel a lot better. With, with, the number of fish that I keep, there is somewhere in, in one of these tanks, there's a dead fish every day. Yeah. I mean, it's... It's inevitable. Inevitable, yeah. It's you just, call them belly sliders? Belly sliders are ones that just don't make it off the bottom. Yeah. You know, and those will mostly happen in the trays. Yeah. Sometimes the first couple of weeks in the tank, you'll see them. Yeah. Um, but, um, but, you know, there are... There's so many fish here that um, not everyone can possibly live. Yeah. They just don't. And also because there's so many you don't notice. And you might not notice. I mean, yeah. there, there's times when, you know, oh, I lost a fish in there. I didn't even know it. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. Um, you know, so, yeah. Uh, so fish, I, I mean, fish die just yeah. like people die. What's um, the plan then? Like, are you going to try, you're going to try and bolster the bloodline? Are you going to? The, with the rams, yeah, I'm always trying. Yeah, I'm, whenever I, whenever I find a nice one in a store, bang, almost always buy it. Yeah, um, and it doesn't have to be a pair. I'd rather pick individuals. So you can like <coughs> pick take the traits yours, I want. Yeah, and then and mix it in. I mean, there was one time I was in Canada. I found I actually found some really nice ones. I picked up a pair. Um, claimed them at the border and waited four hours for them to be cleared for one pair of rams. Did they, you bred them? Uh, I added them to my line, yeah. Okay, cool, yeah, yeah. so you, it was worth it. <sighs> Still deciding. I, I guess so, I yeah, guess it was guess worth so. it, yeah. Yeah, but how many lines of rams are you in now? I'm this? just doing the blue rams right now. But how many lines, like generations? How many are in there? Yes, yeah, oh, I've, I've had some of these for God, like 10 years yeah but I've I've brought new ones in probably 10 times yeah and, and and sometimes it doesn't work out other times it does yeah they are really tough fish yeah that original video you made the one that I keep up and on about that was like, oh setting you, up the 10 gallon ram tank yeah that and the one where you had <coughs> I think it was this tank it was just chock full. oh yeah yeah that yeah. made it look like they were the easiest thing ever to breed they, like. they are easy to breed. They're hard to raise. I yeah, wonder, yeah. does mixing of the bloodlines make the fish stronger? That's all we can hope. Yeah. And, and you know, every, every breeder I know wants to do that, whether they say so or not. Because yeah. I've also heard theories that also weakens them. Like, yeah, I don't think so. Two sides of the story. Yeah, like, yeah. it's like, I don't know. I, I mean, mean, we're not scientists, but... I brought in wild ones one time thinking I would cross them in. Unfortunately, they were tiny. They, they were tiny and they never, ever grew. Yeah. So it didn't work out. But um, What were they like? They were like a ram with hardly any color. Yeah. Um, same body shape. Uh, a li I mean, but they never, they never grew. And I don't know whether that was because they were stunted in the wild or stunted in the whole shipping process, whatever. 
Um, it, it didn't work to try to cross them in. Did you ever just try breeding them for just... Oh, I tried to breed them, them together, and but they just never matured, really. Did you ever just try and breed the wilds together? Yeah, yeah. And they just never really no matured. Yeah. 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 Cool, man. So, yeah. Well, I might wrap it up, you reckon? You look tired. I Are you tired? tired. You yeah. still got to get your cards read. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. You what did your wife say? She said, just tell you more about what you already know about yourself. You'll find out. Uh, yeah. Well, thank you so much for having us to the room. Oh, thank you, you for giving us like the best yeah. time I could have yeah. ever hoped for. Like, cool. Seriously, me Good for me too as well. If you ever come to Australia, yeah, we will, yeah, whatever you want. I cool. mean, Good. So, cool. E even uh, in the outback with a yeah, $6,000? Yeah. I wish I still had that. <laughs> Yeah, I would too. The metal, no, detector. The metal detector. Yeah. yeah. The outback would probably be the easiest thing to get you out to. Because you just fly to Brisbane and then, and then go. But let's go on a rainy season. Yeah, yeah. We, we totally effed up by going on the, the dry. Like, we went and there was nothing. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we saw like okay. three fish in five days. Nice. <laughs> but we did see like shingleback lizards, um, you know, like plants, yeah. bugs, all sorts of stuff that you'd like. But yeah, basically, fly to Brisbane, six hours drive minimum. Nice. And um, we just hang out, camp if you like doing that. I don't know if you do. We can get motels and stuff. And right, right. Whatever, but that's for later date. Hopefully we can get Dean across to Australia for a video. It's That'd be pretty cool. It'll happen. <laughs> that would be fun. Yeah, definitely. Hopefully we can convince your wife. <laughs> yeah. She might not want to do the camping though. Uh, she would. That's cool. Yep, she would. Yeah. Or she might just go to Sydney and say, bye. See you <laughs> Hopefully I see you again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, come right. back in one piece. Awesome. Yeah, so. See you cool. guys. Thank All you. All right.